Christy Anatol is a practicing art psychotherapist and president of the Art Therapy Association of Trinidad and Tobago. We're very happy to have her join us to give some insight about art therapy and some related activities we can look forward to locally. Thank you so much for joining us. Christy, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for having me, DK. Really much our pleasure. Now, let's start right off the bat from board. What is art therapy? Okay. So art therapy is a mental health profession that uses the process of creating art as well as the resulting artwork um, as a means of helping someone to work through whatever maybe mental, emotional, or even physical challenges they might be experiencing. Um, it's important to note, however, that art therapy can only occur in the presence of an art therapist. So it's almost like there needs to be a triangle where there is an art therapist, there is some form of artwork, and there is a client or clients taking part. And what is the difference between, or can you give us a little distinction between art therapy and classes or therapeutic art? Because we see instances where we have sip and paint being advertised, even now during the pandemic, that's virtual. So what, what's, what's the defining line between them? Sure. So um, you're right, you know, there's a lot of different activities, even things like coloring books, um, where sometimes it's advertised as art therapy, and there is a very fine line. So um, anyone can engage in art making and creative exercises, and it can be something that is soothing, it can be something that is therapeutic for them. Um, however, you can think about it in terms of uh, everyone knows they need to brush their teeth right? You know, you need to brush your teeth a few times a day um, for your own dental hygiene. However, taking care of yourself in that way is not necessarily a substitute for going to the dentist, right? Um, so the same way that you can create your own art, it can be soothing, it can be therapeutic, it can maybe help you feel a little bit better, um, that in itself is not therapy, right? And that cannot um, be a replacement for a therapeutic uh, medium. In, in times such as this, the pandemic, do you find some of those lines or almost wanting to blur a little bit? Because I see you, you, you spoke about the triangle, but having, mm -hmm. but outside of the presence of that art therapist, do you find some people wanting to say, okay, well, this, this is therapy for me? And because even, even in some of the um, Ministry of Health presses that we've been having, you've heard some of the mental health experts speaking about picking up artwork, doing things like that mm -hmm. to help take you to certain places. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and I mean, I'm in no way saying that people should not be creating art and they should not be engaging in that sort of way. Um, that's definitely something that, you know, someone on their own can pick up. They can decide, okay, I'm going to get creative. I'm going to make some art. I'm going to color. Um, and those are definitely really useful and beneficial ways to sort of look after yourself and look after your health. Um, I think the the line is kind of drawn when you know if someone feels as though they really need that extra support um if maybe they're dealing with um, a mental illness or maybe there's a diagnosis involved um then that would be the situation in which they would um reach out for a qualified art therapist for support so those are situations that we might say okay maybe just coloring or creating our own art may not be enough i like the fact that you, you speak about a qualified art therapist what are some of the things to look for if you're seeking an art therapist? Okay, so if you're looking for an art therapist in Trinidad, um, the main thing that you would want to look for is that the person has their master's degree in art therapy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, right now, unfortunately, we don't have a licensing board in Trinidad. So most of the time, the therapists here who have trained abroad, they might um, follow, you know, whatever licensing board is up there, whether it's the States, whether it's in the UK, we don't have one locally. But at the baseline, you would want to look and see that they do have their master's degree in art therapy. Now, and that brings me to asking you about your journey a little bit. Sometimes you reach into a situation and then you realize, okay, but well, there was some forward thinking individuals who said, this is what they want to do. And then they kind of find themselves, not necessarily on an island, but at a premium and limited edition. So how did you get into art therapy? What, what, what was that driving factor that sent you along this road and career path? So um, my story is a little 
a little different, right? Um, I always knew that I wanted to do something with art, right? I did art all through school. I always really enjoyed it. Um, but I think when I went on to university, I kind of had this thought in my head that, well, what am I going to do with an art degree, right? So I started school. Um, I was taking these art classes. I was also taking some psychology classes. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed learning about the human mind, learning about how to help people in that sort of way. And it was really by chance that I happened to just be researching, okay, what can I do with art and what can I do with psychology? Um, and it kind of just presented itself that there was this field called art therapy. At the time, I believe there was only one other art therapist in Trinidad. So I said, you know what, this is the direction that I'm going to go in. Um, so I finished up my courses. I got all my prerequisites that I needed. Um, and I went on to train in art therapy. And do you find yourself kind of gauging everyone's art? So you see someone doodling here, and you start to treat it as though it's a Rorschach test. Um, how has that helped with your interactions with people and their art? Well, you know, it's funny you say that, because one of the most um, common questions I get when I say that I'm an art therapist is, oh, well, you know, um, my child always draws these trees with this bird in it. What does that mean? Okay, and there's kind of this, um, this excitement about, you know, wanting to know what art means, what is the underlying meaning. Um, and my response to that is always, it depends, and people kind of get a little upset, right? But it really just depends on the meaning that that person puts into the art. So I could say all sorts of things, you know, I could say, oh, well, maybe that's just what your child sees when they look outside in the morning and they want to draw it. Um, maybe they drew it before and they got a lot of praise and they heard, wow, this is really great. And they said, okay, I'm going to draw this all the time. Um, maybe it does have some deeper meaning, but as the therapist, the job is not necessarily to put your own perspective or put your own meaning onto someone's art. Um, it's really about what the client says about their art and what their experience is. So was it a means of just releasing some sort of emotion? Um, was there something particular that they were trying to portray, um, something that they were trying to work through? And so the therapist's role is really not to look and say this is what it means and to diagnose, um, but to help the client to really learn a little bit more about their art, right? And ask these sorts of questions like, well, why maybe did you choose that color, right? Um, tell me a little bit more about these shapes, right? Do you see um, any similarity between the art that you created today and the art that you created last week. Okay, um, and it's really just helping, as I said, the client to derive their own meaning um, and to figure out for themselves what their art means to them. And I like the fact that you speak about not necessarily projecting yourself onto an individual or the work or that is produced by an individual. It reminds me of two mm -hmm. things. One, Paul Keynes Douglas talking about a child, everything was black, everything the child was creating was black and black angels and black trees. And, and when they really got down to it is because it was only one marker that the child had. I mean, and that exactly. is one. And then you also have different societies clashing and having different ideas sometimes. So in the way that we would write our top to bottom, left to right all the time, the Egyptians would go from left to right, right to left, because that was the way they plowed their fields. So having that different kind of understanding and bringing it to bear, but not saying, OK, well, this is what I dictate for you. But I want to continue the conversation. We take a short break. We come back. We're speaking with Christy Anatol, a practicing art psychotherapist. Stay right here with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Christy Anatol, president of the Art Therapy Association of Trinidad and Tobago. And Christy, I want to get into your business, literally, at this point in time. Uh, Artbeat Consulting, what it is about, how people can access the services, and what services you offer. Okay, so Artbeat Consulting, as you said, is my business, right? Um, and it kind of falls in three parts. So I do have a private practice where I work with clients from the age of three upwards um, with a variety of different challenges, right? I see both children and I see adults. Um, my office is located in Maraval, and so that's where I see the majority of my clients. Um, also, under the umbrella of Artbeat, I do workshops. 
So I do workshops both in the corporate setting as well as in the school setting. And these workshops can be based on a variety of themes. Um, one of the most popular ones in the workplace is sort of dealing with stress, dealing with burnout. Um, and what I do is I try to introduce creative ways to cope with those sorts of challenges. Um, the workshops are very hands-on. We're always making a lot of art, having a lot of fun. Um, and that's actually something I really enjoy doing because you get to see how many adults don't really take time to have fun and get creative. Um, so it's usually a really good time and it's also really informative and educational both for the people who are attending as well as myself. Um, the third part of it, which is kind of the most recent venture, is um, in the start of the pandemic, I decided that, okay, something I've always been really passionate about is encouraging people to make art, to get creative. And sometimes the response might be, well, I don't know what to do. I'm not a creative person. Um, I don't really have the resources. Where do I even start? And so what I decided to do was to figure out a way that I could provide people with everything that they needed um, in the easiest way possible, in the most convenient way possible. And I started a product called Create at Home, which is a children's subscription box. And so it contains all of the art materials, everything that a child would need to be able to create a variety of arts and crafts based on a specific theme for the month. Um, so those are the three things that kind of fall under Art Week Consulting. Now, what does that team consist of? Because I doubt this is something that you're doing by yourself. It's a one-on-one show. <laughs> it's a one-on-one show. Yes. So even so, even like with workshops and stuff, you're taking all you're taking on all that load. Well, it depends, right? So sometimes, you know, um, as you mentioned, I am part of the Art Therapy Association in Trinidad. So we are able to work as a team if we're doing things. Um, so I see you have a picture there of we do a Creative Arts Therapies Week where all of us will come together and do some workshops. We have art therapists, music therapists. Um, dance movement and drama therapists in Trinidad. So that's an opportunity where we come together and we do workshops for the public um, and we help each other out in that regard. Um, and so that's definitely a great resource that I can pull from. If I'm maybe doing a workshop that's a bit larger in numbers and I need a little bit more hands-on support, um, I might ask one of them to come on board. Um, and it's really, it's a great team that we have here. It's small, it's small, but it's a great team. And I'm wondering about your role now or what your workload has been like during the pandemic because there have been conversations about who is a necessary worker or an essential worker. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I want to juxtapose that with a, a quote from your email, your signature, art washes from the soul, the dust of everyday life. And this is from Pablo mm -hmm. Picasso. So where do you yeah. see yourself fitting into the fabric of the society at this point in time? Um, well, to answer your question about how it has been throughout the course of the pandemic, um, it's really been up and down. Um, I think what happened when we got our first stay-at-home measures is that everyone wanted to just, you know, stay home, right? Um, and so, as I said, the majority of my clients are children, and so parents didn't really feel so comfortable bringing their children to in-person sessions. Um, so at this point is when I had to adapt a little bit. And so I started to do online sessions. So I'm now at the point that I'm doing both virtual for those who it might be appropriate for, as well as in-person sessions. Um, this was also the time that I decided, well, okay, this might be a good time to try to encourage people, even if they aren't going to therapy, even if they aren't working on specific goals, um, to just encourage people to make art and to engage in some more of that therapeutic art making that we spoke about. Um, so that's the time that I kind of dove into the subscription box and trying to just encourage people to make art at home and spend quality, quality time with their families. Um, now things are picking up a bit. I think that as a society, we're kind of realizing that this is not something that's going to go away, you know, in the next couple of days, in the next couple of months. 
um, I think that people are kind of starting to take notes of how they are responding emotionally and mentally and they're realizing, okay, um, this is something that I need to work on. This is something that I need to deal with now. And so now I'm seeing that it's picking back up a bit. Um, I'm getting some new calls. I'm getting some new clients. Um, and I anticipate that it's going to stay that way for a while to come. And what are some of the, first of all, I want to know how people contact you, contact Artbeat Consulting. And I also want to know what are some of the specific issues that you would help individuals who have been diagnosed? So is it ADHD? Is it autism? What are some of the things that you would help work with people through? Okay. Um, so I work with clients with a variety of challenges, right? Um, so some do have specific diagnoses, um, whether it's, as you mentioned, something like autism spectrum disorder, ADHD. Um, I do have a lot of clients with anxiety and anxious behaviors. Um, I have some clients who have been in situations of domestic violence, gender-based violence, um, trauma, those sort of things. And I also have the clients who just feel as though they don't have anything specifically that might be troubling them. They don't have a specific diagnosis, but they just want to work through um, some relationship challenges, um, financial difficulties, you know, um, a uh, stressful situation at home and those sort of clients who just want to work on themselves. Um, in terms of contacting me, so I do have a website. The website is www.artbeatsconsulting.com. Okay. Um, you can also contact me by email and the email would be info at sameartbeatconsulting.com. Okay. Um, and you can also contact me by phone. Right, my number is 710-8145. So those are the three major ways you can contact me. I'm also on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so if you want to connect there and just kind of take a look and see what's going on, what's happening, um, I'm always happy to connect with people through that medium as well. And so that art beat is A-R-T-B-E-A-T -E consulting.com, right? Yes, that's correct. So in and I want to really thank you for the work that you're doing and basically also inspiring people to find the artists within themselves. Because many times, whether or not it's wars, farming, it's the artists of whatever, be it painting, visual, musical, who would help to kind of chart a course out of these things. And uh, mm -hmm. I guess we need to, in being our brothers and sisters, keepers, we also need to try to help ourselves as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, and something I just like to encourage people um, to engage in is that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a good artist, right? What is a good artist? It doesn't matter if you're skilled. I feel as though as a society, we sometimes have this fear when it comes to the arts, um, almost as though if I'm not an artist and if I'm not skilled, I'm not allowed to do that, right? I'm not allowed to have fun in that way. Um, and when it comes to creating art for your own benefits and for your own stress relief and even, you know, going to art therapy, the most important thing is just that you are expressing yourself. It's not about how it looks. Sometimes it's really just about the process. And when you're finished, you might say, whatever, I'm going to throw it away. You know, I'm not even going to keep it. It's really just about expressing yourself, being able to get something out on the paper. And regardless of how it looks, who cares, right? That's the least important part of art therapy. So I want to thank you for validating my stickmen and also for the yes. work that you do, Christy, Christy <laughs> Anatole. Thank you so much for joining us and the work that you're doing with Artbeat Consulting. And on behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Ronster. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.